Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The 24th NEDLAC Summit took place in Johannesburg this week amid low growth, rising unemployment and weak confidence. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss whether or not NEDLAC can contribute to a turnaround in South Africa's fortunes. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What was the mood at the summit? I think it's best described as subdued, almost depressed. I think there's a lot of mea culpa going around, including from government, admitting a lot of failure. But what we didn't really see were any concrete plans, programs of action, and any sign that there was uh, that NEDLAC was ready to reinvigorate the social dialogue, change the narrative. Lots of moaning about Tito and Bowenny's uh, paper and the, the process that was followed, the lack of consultation, but not really any vision statements apart from. I suppose business saying that we need a new agenda and in some ways defining that agenda really around some of the microeconomic reforms that are in um, Minister Mbawini's paper. Uh, things like uh, getting tourism going again, things like getting policy certainty really sorted out once and for all around visas, etc. So, but the mood was uh, almost a, re a resignation. Uh, uh, there was a staleness in the room and uh, a feeling that there were no real new ideas. Is NEDLAC playing a constructive role? I think that's part of the problem. I think uh, NEDLAC isn't uh, seen as a place where you can have constructive dis discussion. I think the touchstone for that has been the integrated resource plan process uh, that we know that was published all the way back in August 2018 by then Minister Jeff Kadebe, who was Energy Minister at the time. It's now going into October 2019 and we still do not have an integrated resource plan for electricity. Now this is astonishing because electricity as we know has been a drain on both the lack thereof and the pricing thereof has been a weight around the neck of the South African economy for over a decade. So this is a high priority, a big ticket item, something that you need to have certainty around you need to have, we also know that we're facing shortages of supply, so we need to start procuring new supply because we know that the state-owned enterprise Eskom is broken, broken and bankrupt. So we really need to get some movement and some certainty here. And, and uh, this thing got stalled in Nedlac, the discussions there in for months and months and months, apparently rejected ultimately by la the Labour constituents uh, but now, now needs to go into the c uh, cabinet process. Hopefully there will be some decision from cabinet very soon on that. But that it is a sort of, it epitomizes the sort of malaise in Ed Nedlac and the, the lack of movement when it's almost you send things to either to die at Nedlac or to be delayed. Is the social compact really necessary for reigniting growth? Well, I think in the past, it's in our DNA post-1994 that we try and use social compacting to you know, create, craft a vision that everyone can get behind. It's usually a compromised vision. Uh, so the business will give, government will give, labor will give, so that we can get behind a national agenda and start moving. I think we've had some successes in the past in that. But there is this jadedness, there is this frustration. And it was interesting that neither the deputy president, who's always addressed the NEDLAC summit, nor the president, uh, presidency generally, was was at the NEDLAC summit. Instead, they chose to have a meeting with business leaders, uh, and that really, I suppose, that circumvention of NEDLAC is where a lot of people are at. Unless NEDLAC gets its act together, and I think one of the issues in a very fractured society is the constituents uh, that make up labour, business, and government. Well, government is fairly coherent. Business is going to become more coherent with the Black Business Council being allowed to re-engage in NEDLAC at some point in the future. But on the Labour side, it's, it's totally fragmented. We know that Kusatu has split massively uh, following the axing of NUMSA from its ranks in 2014. And that means that Labour representatives at NEDLAC don't really represent all the constituent parts. And unless there is greater inclusivity uh, and a way to bring in the likes of Lumsa, potentially the likes of Anku, into the process. I think there's there's going to be a huge mistrust of anything that comes out of NEDLAC from those other labour components. So I think that it really is time 
for Nedlac to look at itself in the mirror, look at what really should go through it and who should be part of it. And unless I think it's, it gets that act together, it's going to become less and less relevant to this new era. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.